Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Clark and I'm an evangelist for the Developer Relations team. I'm excited to present this training series for the Carbon Black Cloud APIs, so let's get started. This series includes an introduction to REST APIs, calling Carbon Black Cloud APIs using curl requests and Postman, API error handling and troubleshooting, and using the Carbon Black Cloud SDK. This lesson is the first in the series and it introduces REST APIs, HTTP requests and responses, and API authentication. I'd like to start with some context about why we should learn about REST APIs. Carbon Black Cloud has APIs that customers can use to integrate into their environments. APIs allow our customers to easily harness the functionality of our code without giving them access to the code itself. Understanding APIs is the first step in developing and using integrations with our products, and customer value increases as we all learn to effectively use the Carbon Black Cloud APIs. Customers have access to all Carbon Black Cloud documentation regarding APIs and integrations on the developer network. These documents provide descriptions, instructions on how to call the APIs, supported properties, and example requests and responses. They vary slightly depending on the age of the API, but they provide all necessary information for customers to get started using our APIs. Now that we understand the positive impacts of using APIs, let's talk about what a REST API actually does. Let's say you're trying to find travel videos on YouTube. You open up YouTube, type travel into the search field, hit enter, and you see a list of videos about travel. A REST API works in a similar way. You search for something and you get a list of results back from the service you request. An API is an application programming interface. It is a set of rules that allow programs to talk to each other. The developer creates the API on the server and allows the client to talk to it. You can think of this like a transaction in a restaurant. The customer acts as the application, inputting his desired order to the waiter. The waiter acts as the API, relaying the order to the kitchen staff. The kitchen staff acts as the server, using the request from the waiter to return the desired order, or data, to the customer. The waiter then returns the order to the customer in the form of a response. Essentially, the API acts as a middleman, relaying requests to the server and responses to the application. REST determines what the API looks like. It stands for Representational State Transfer. It is a set of rules that developers follow when creating an API. One of these rules states that you should be able to get a piece of data, called a resource, when you link to a specific URL. REST APIs allow users to access web services without a lot of overhead processing or bandwidth, so they are desirable for internet usage. Each URL is called a request, while the data sent back to you is called a response. It is important to know that a request is made up of four things, the endpoint, the method, the headers, and the data or body. Let's dive into each of these individually. The endpoint is the URL you request. It consists of a root endpoint, a path, and sometimes query parameters. The root endpoint is the starting point of the API. Its format is similar to what you would type in your browser's address bar. The path, sometimes referred to as the route, determines the resource you're requesting. Think of it like an automatic answering machine that asks you to press one for a service, press two for another service, three for yet another service, and so on. You can access paths just like you can link to parts of a website. For example, if you want to perform an alert search in the Carbon Black Cloud console, you would navigate to alerts and type in the search bar. To call the alerts API, you would use this endpoint, which consists of the root endpoint and the path to access the alert search functionality. To understand what paths are available to you, you need to look through the API documentation. The photo on the right shows some sample paths for an admin REST API. Users can retrieve help information, execute administration commands, and download files by accessing different paths. Colons and curly braces in a path denote variables. You should replace these values with actual values when you send your request. In this case, you should replace colon username with the actual username of the user you're searching for. If I'm searching for alerts using the Carbon Black Cloud Alerts API, I would replace org key with the key of the organization for which I want to find alerts. The final part of an endpoint is query parameters. Technically, query parameters are not part of the REST architecture, but you'll see lots of APIs use them. Query parameters give you the option to modify your request with key value pairs. 
They always begin with a question mark, and each parameter pair is separated with an ampersand. In the example below, we are asking the API to filter the results where the type equals alerts and the start equals zero. We are also asking to sort the results by the field search time and display them in descending order. Query parameters are not required for API calls, but can help narrow the results to exactly what the user wants to see. The next component of an HTTP request is the method, which is the type of request you send to the server. It is used to perform create, read, update, and delete actions. Git is the default method type, and it retrieves a resource from a server. If you think of it from a data perspective, Git reads data from the database. Post creates a new resource on a server. It creates a new entry in the database and returns an API response of whether the creation was successful. Put or patch update a resource on a server. They update an entry in the database and return an API response of whether the update was successful. Delete deletes a resource from a server. It deletes the entry in the database and returns an API response of whether the deletion was successful. We can see some examples here with this movie API. We can retrieve a list of movies with the get method type. If we create, update, or delete a movie, we will get a response back letting us know if the action was successful. You can view more complex Carbon Black Cloud examples in the User Management API. The example we just saw was the conventional usage, but some circumstances require deviation from the norm. For example, Git requests have a max length of 2048 characters. In the Alerts API, we anticipated query strings with enough input to exceed the max length, which would lead to truncated values and invalid data being returned. The fix for this was to use a POST method type instead, which does not have a max length. The third component of an HTTP request are the headers, which provide information to the client and the server. Headers can be used for various purposes, including authentication and body content information. The format of an HTTP header is a property value pair separated by a colon, as we see in these examples from the Live Response API documentation. Some of the common headers you may see are set cookie, user agent, and XCSRF token. If you want to see a full list of valid headers, you can refer to the HTTP headers reference guide. The final component is the data, which contains the information you want to send to the server. It is often referred to as the body or message and is used with post, put, patch, and delete methods. The format you'll typically see is a JSON object, like the photo in the slide. Here we are doing an alert search, and we have included search criteria in the request body to filter the results. When we send the request to search alerts, we can expect an HTTP response back from the server. In this instance, a response body will be returned containing a list of alerts, but if we were creating, deleting, or updating alerts, we would only see a status code in the response. These are some typical response codes you may see and what they mean. These codes can be found in our API documentation and are helpful for troubleshooting. There's one last important element of APIs that we haven't yet discussed in this introduction. In order to access our APIs, customers must be authenticated to prevent impersonation, data leaks, and other security risks. The main methods of authentication on the web are with a username and password, with a secret token or API key, which is what the Carbon Black Cloud APIs currently use, and with a JSON web token, which we will be implementing when Carbon Black Cloud is integrated with CSP. A token or API key acts as a unique identifier to let the API know who is trying to gain access. It's used to track and control how the API is being used and who can access it. APIs will throw authentication errors for invalid credentials or tokens. Some APIs require additional permissions before access is allowed, and it's best practice to only give permissions for the API calls that will be used. Although not typically recommended, there are scenarios in which it makes sense to give the API key a user role. One example is when the API key will be used for scripting by one specific person, such as for threat hunting or incident investigation. In this case, the API key is treated as a user who has access to all API calls. The last few slides offer instructions on how to create a custom access level in Carbon Black Cloud. These same instructions can be found on our API documentation in the developer network. 
Instead of reading the instructions, I thought it would be more helpful for us to create a custom access level together. Now that we have a better understanding of REST APIs and their capabilities, and we have a basic knowledge of HTTP requests, responses, and authentication, it's time for us to call an API. Our next lesson in the series will be calling an API through a curl request. Thank you for your time today, and I hope this information has been beneficial. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.